Secretary Chertoff, Admiral Allen, good afternoon all. <laughs> Mr. Secretary, we're delighted to welcome you here once again to Coast Guard Headquarters, and we're even more delighted to praise your remarkable leadership of DHS over the past four years. Your commitment to the shared principles of freedom, security, and keeping the American people safe is extraordinary. And without further ado, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security and our Service Secretary, the Honorable Michael Chertoff. I'm really touched that you've arranged this uh, going away ceremony for me in a town hall. It's a great opportunity, though, for me to recognize you. The proudest title, I've been a lot of different things. I haven't held a job very long. I've been a U.S. attorney, a federal judge, an assistant attorney general, secretary of Homeland Security. The proudest title I've borne is secretary of the Coast Guard. This is a magnificent organization uh, that has proven itself again and again, whether it was in Hurricane Katrina, or up in the Arctic, uh, or down in, in the Straits of Cuba, or over in Bahrain. And I'm actually proud to say, as I reflect back on it, and happy to say that some of my most interesting experiences in my current job have been with the Coast Guard. Um, I've done a, a fair number of interesting trips. We've done motor lifeboat school. We did it twice, uh, with the second time with Admiral Allen. Uh, someone let me pilot a helicopter for a little bit. That may have been a, I won't give the person's name up. It was probably irresponsible. We, uh, we were in Bahrain and saw our Coast Guard detachment there, and we also uh, overnighted up in the icebreaker, the cutter, the Healy, up in the Arctic Circle. Uh, I did not quite make it down to Jayadav South. That's one regret, but um, I have a standing invitation uh, to go down uh, and be a house guest at some point in the future with a new incoming uh, commander down there. More seriously, uh, it's been a tremendous source of pride to me to see what a fine organization this is. Uh, and of course, under Admiral Allen's just outstanding leadership, uh, he's really transformed it for what is required in the 21st century. The Mumbai attack <clears throat> last year was a vivid reminder that so much of our security really rests in the hands of the Coast Guard and our ability to protect our ports and to protect against maritime attacks. And when you're here uh, next uh, Tuesday during the inaugural, you'll see that the Coast Guard's playing a pivotal role in making sure that we don't have a threat coming from the, not only the, the uh, domain of the river, but actually the air domain, because uh, you're integral to the mission of uh, protecting against an air intrusion uh, under our, our current, I think the title is probably classified, but you know what the process is. Uh, if I look at the major accomplishments in the last four years of the Coast Guard, and first and foremost, I have to say, again, the leadership not only of Admiral Allen, but Admiral Collins before him and everybody else who's uh, a fine leader, as well as the uh, alumni who are very much part of the DNI of DHS, whether it's Admiral, Admiral Roger Roof has stood up our operation uh, planning coordination uh, directorate, which gives us the ability to combine a J3 and a J5, or Admiral Johnson, who's the deputy head of FEMA. I think it's a reflection of how deeply ingrained the uh, traditions and the experience and the judgment of the Coast Guard are in the DNA of the Department of Homeland Security. You've really become the backbone of the department. I think in many ways, if I may say so, the Coast Guard's never had a more fitting home than the Department of Homeland Security, and I'm glad to see you there. Among the landmark accomplishments was the 2006 passage of the Safe Port Act, <clears throat> which revolutionized the public and private sector partnerships required to protect the nation's ports. The passage of me measure enhancing enforcement against self-propelled semi-submersible drug smuggling vessels. We've had some unbelievable seizures of these semi-submersibles, um, which are a ref reflection of uh, part of what we're doing at the land border, but also an emphasizes how important the maritime border is. You know, the beauty of having you integrated is not just the fact that we're getting greater interoperability between the maritime assets of CBP and the Coast Guard, but it's the fact that we recognize that we have to treat our border, air, sea, and land as a unified enterprise, as something that we have to deal with holistically. And again, that's been very much a part of what the Coast Guard has done. Recapitalizing the Coast Guard. Uh, my wife had the privilege of being the sponsor of the first national security cutter, the Bertoff, which is 
currently in service at sea uh, and performing her very important responsibilities. We've christened the second, and we've begun building the third. So we are full steam ahead on the national security cutters. Despite all the churn and the uh, thrashing about with respect to deep water, the fact is we have got those vessels out there, uh, and they're going to be doing a great job for the American people. We've developed, acquired, and delivered the first six response boats, medium. We've acquired and delivered the first six HC-144A Ocean Sentry Maritime Patrol aircraft. And we've extended coverage of Rescue 21 Command and Control Communications to cover 23,000 plus miles of the nation's coastline. So those are real accomplishments. We've also retooled the acquisition process. We've got the Deployable Operations Group. We've really reconfigured the Coast Guard as a cutting edge tip of the spear organization. And contrary to what GAO said recently, without sacrificing the other important missions. But we also have to recognize the Coast Guard in the 21st century can't be the Coast Guard of the 20th century. Let me talk about some of the operations of the Coast Guard, and I can't uh, <clears throat> begin without talking about Hurricane Katrina. You'll note that the President, in his uh, farewell remarks yesterday, uh, when he was asked about Katrina, I can tell you that that's a uh, I've had some conversations with the President about that, and I know it's um, something he's thought about quite a bit. The thing he said, the thing he emphasized was, you can't say that the government was a total failure because you had 30,000 rescues by the U.S. Coast Guard, which everybody admits was outstanding. Uh, what he didn't have time to say, but which I've said, um, was my replacement of Michael Brown with Admiral Allen was one of the best decisions I made, and I think I challenged anybody to say that they thought that was a bad decision, that I should have kept Michael Brown and had Ma Admiral Allen not uh, take over. And I, nobody has raised their hand to challenge that yet. And that's because of Admiral Allen's outstanding leadership, which is a product of the Coast Guard's training, traditions, and operational uh, experience. But even putting aside Katrina, <clears throat> Coast Guard units saved nearly 21,000 lives during the four-year period I've been secretary. During the four-year period, <coughs> Coast Guard removed over 1.3 million pounds of cocaine and over 53,000 pounds of marijuana from the illegal drug smuggling supply chain. During that same period, you interdicted over 28,000 illegal immigrants and employed biometric at sea uh, technology in Mona Passage, resulting in a decrease of 12,000 illegal immigrants in 2004 to less than 1,500 in 2008. And by the way, let me say that your success in interdicting migrants by sea has actually had a deterrent effect. It's been important in making sure we don't have a mass migration. As I indicated earlier, Coast Guard helicopters assumed responsibility for National Capital Region air defense in 2006. That was uh, a big step forward. And we have a forward operating location in Barrow, Alaska to determine the Coast Guard requirements in the vital area of the Arctic. As Admiral uh, Allen has made clear, uh, whatever the cause, the change in the topography of the Arctic and the shrinkage of the ice creates new challenges as well as new opportunities, and the Coast Guard's going to be very much up front in that. The Coast Guard's also played the lead in the new Homeland Security Presidential Directive on Arctic Policy, and I'll be watching very carefully to see how uh, you move forward on that. So your missions are, are expanding, and I'm confident, I think we had a proposed budget we've uh, I guess I would call it pro forma budget, which we've submitted for 2010, and I have every hope that the next administration will continue and build on uh, the funding and the capabilities that we've put in the Coast Guard. Also, with respect to the war against uh, the violent extremists, the terrorists, uh, we have deployed forces, 410-foot patrol boats and several PSUs in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom. The Coast Guard Cutter Dallas was the first uh, vessel, first military vessel that deployed if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Georgia, wasn't it? Yes, in Georgia, right after the invasion. It was a solid show of support. Uh, probably means if you're in the Coast Guard, you probably don't want to be showing up in Moscow in uniform for a little while. But the Dallas also deployed uh, in support of African Command, and um, we also embarked the first African law enforcement team on a U.S. warship from Cape Verde. And as I said, we de delivered humanitarian aid in Georgia. So that really, you know, I said to the Admiral at some point early on, why, why do we call it the Coast Guard? Who's coast? We're on everybody's coast. Um, that's meant to be a compliment. Uh, 
Um, but we are, and I think, frankly, as piracy becomes a greater issue off of Somalia and in other parts of the world, I suspect that your expertise, uh, which is a combination of both military and law enforcement capabilities, will be even more in demand. So what can I say except to say I'm really proud that this department has the Coast Guard, not just as a member of the department family, but really I would say the heart and soul of DHS in many ways is the Coast Guard. And your leadership in terms of jointness, uh, some of what's being done in the ports in terms of joint operations and joint command, uh, all of this is, uh, I think, a great model, not just for DHS, but for all of the civilian agencies who have um, learned a lot, but I s still have some lessons to learn about how to work together and, re and really be joined. I think this is the prototype organization. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing young men and women graduate from the Coast Guard Academy and I know what fine material you have to work with, and I've had the privilege of, as I said, standing with you in a lot of interesting and exciting places, and I know how well you perform uh, under fire, both literally and metaphorically. I'm really proud to be part of the Coast Guard family. I have more Coast Guard running paraphernalia than <laughs> you can imagine, and uh, I look forward to continuing um, my support of the Coast Guard, uh, even as I step down as service secretary. So. Thank you for letting me be among your comrade, comrades and for being part of your mission. And God bless you. And let, may I say before I conclude, enormous gratitude goes to the families of all of you who deploy, all of you who serve, because I know how difficult it is to leave your families, whether it's going overseas to Bahrain or even on a long cutter deployment, whether it's going up to the Arctic or whether it's simply flying rescue missions, where, as we know, unfortunately not everybody returns. So please convey my deep gratitude and admiration for all of your families who support what you do and make it possible for the Coast Guard to be the organization that it is. God bless you. Continue to keep us safe, and I will continue to stand to support you. Thank you. keep you long, but uh, let me just add my uh, personal thanks for your leadership and your friendship. Uh, we stood the four to eight on the Healy, north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, we were off Peacock Spit in about 20 footers in motor lifeboats, and uh, we were with the president uh, on the football field at the Coast Guard Academy to watch the cadets graduate. Uh, those type of uh, activities, as you've already noted, uh, create great bonds, and uh, you're a great shipmate, and we're really glad to be with you today, sir. So we have a few things for you started. This is a citation to accompany the award of the Distinguished Public Service Award to Michael Chertoff, Secretary of Homeland Security. Uh, the Commandant of the United States Coast Guard takes great pleasure in presenting the Coast Guard Distinguished Public Service Award to Secretary Michael Chertoff in recognition of his service to the nation and his strong support of the United States Coast Guard as the Secretary of Homeland Security and the Service Secretary for the United States Coast Guard from February 2005 to January 2009. Under his dedicated leadership, the department vigorously protected the nation's air, sea, and land borders to prevent a terrorist attack on our soil. He forged strong bonds with the Department of Defense to effectively align the nation's resources for homeland defense and disaster response planning. A strong proponent of the Coast Guard, he ensured the service acquired the authorities needed to prosecute the global war on terror and meet the maritime challenges of the 21st century. He facilitated passage of the landmark legislation, including the Safe Port Act, and a measure to enhance enforcement against self-propelled semi-submersible drug smuggling vessels. The Secretary strongly supported the Coast Guard's airborne use of force capabilities, which produced successive years of record maritime drug seizures. A staunch advocate of recapitalizing the Coast Guard, he facilitated the commissioning of the first national security cutter, the Bertoff. Secretary Chertoff's vision, strong leadership, and dedication to duty are most heartily committed and are keeping the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard, and for once, signed by me.
And uh, I don't know where you're going to hang this. But <laughs> <laughs> it's a plaque with, uh, this is uh, your flag. And uh, this was broken over the Coast Guard Cutter Burtop. And this is for you. Wow, in that's fabulous. That's a guarantee that it will be hung in our house. Very quick to put my wife on the <laughs> that's, I, that's, that's We're the supreme integrator, sir. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very proud. Yes. She was a, that is wonderful.